let's do some more inventing using core technologies. Applying code that is easy enough for beginners to grasp, while presenting concepts that are empowering enough to stimulate even the most advanced software engineers and developers. Our goal will be to allow the users to finely tune the brightness or darkness setting of the application theme, and also automatically and dynamically switch the color of the text from white to black, depending on if they change it to a light background or dark background. This is especially helpful and user-friendly for people that find both dark and light themes irritating to their eyes due to heavy contrasts of very bright text on dark backgrounds or very dark text on light backgrounds. The nice part about these new tutorials is that you don't need to code or manage two or more style sheets to provide the design changes. It's all done using a single style sheet where JavaScript manipulates the design according to the user preferences. I just want to add a little edit here to show that if you change the event handling to the mouse move event, you'll get a more smooth transition from light to dark theme. That way it won't be so abrupt. If you wanted to use that, it would just be a little more computationally expensive, but not much. It, it does make a smoother effect. So in your code, instead of on change, it would be on mouse move. Or if you're setting add event listeners, it would just be the mouse move event instead of the change event for the slider. Okay, now the code structure of this is very similar to what we had in the last tutorial two days ago for color adjust theming. But in this one, we're just adjusting the lightness or darkness of the application and we're showing how to automatically change the color of the text so in our example.html file you'll see we have in the head element a link to the style sheet and then a link to the color adjust.js file then in the body element we have a header element the main element and then here's our div that holds the panel one for the light dark theme adjust settings there'll be an input range slider with a minimum value of zero, maximum value of 100. And in the tutorial two days ago, we had a max value of 50 because we wanted to keep a darker type theme and not allow it to get too bright. So that's how you can constrain the brightness. But on this one, we're going max 100. That way they can make it all the way white. They can go from all the way black to white and everything in between. The default value is going to be 20 because the default design is going to have a dark theme. If you wanted to have a default light theme, you would put that at a higher value. And the ID of this element is lightness and on change, when anybody grabs the slider knob and moves it around, this color adjust function will fire off on the change event. The color adjust function in our color adjust.js file Will be executed then once again we have our save button which i'm going to show you how to make this save color operational in a future tutorial in this playlist to show you how to make a cookie that will save the user's color choice that way when they leave and come back the next day to your application they'll still have the same color that they set when they left right now it's doing nothing it's just sitting there waiting for that tutorial then we do have an operational button here for reset to default. And that runs the color reset function once again. Now we'll take a quick look at the style sheet, which I changed up a little bit from the last tutorial. So the only thing that's different in this one is we set a background color using HSL. So zero degrees hue, zero percent saturation and 20% lightness setting, which is equivalent, I believe to this hex color, a dark gray, but not quite black. So that's the default when they arrive. Then the text color for the body, I made white. And this can also be a hex color of FFF, or you can put the word white, or you can also use RGBA, HSL, or any other color coding function in CSS. But I just wanted to write the word white to make it very understandable. So a gray background 
on the darker side with a white text. And you can see in the header element, in the main element, there are no color settings at all. And the design of panel one is pretty much irrelevant. You would design that any way you want. Now what I decided to do in this coloradjust.js file is give you guys just the basic of the basic to start off with. And then during the video here, I will tweak this code to show you different variations and other approaches to doing something like this that will give you more control over the design. For instance, the header can have a different brightness setting, a slightly different brightness setting than the body or the main element. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Then if I move it up, now watch the text color. Pay attention to the text color. Right now it's white. Now when I reach 50%, it's going to turn black because the theme is getting brighter and brighter. And you can manipulate that text to be any color you want according to the percentage of this range slider. It doesn't have to go from just white to black. It can go from a light gray if you want it when it's totally black. And then it can change all the way through here if you want to put more condition statements in your JavaScript. But for this example, I just made it go from white on a dark theme. The text goes from white. And once it reaches 50% or more, the text changes to black automatically so where the user doesn't have to fool with it. Now for me personally, this is too much contrast. A very white page or very light color page with very dark text. If I'm looking at that for a long time, it'll irritate my eyes. So something more like this is where I would set it if I were a user of this application. Then I would save that color because that's very comfortable and pleasing to my eyes. The same with the dark background. This white text is a little bit too bright and contrasting for my eyes. To look at it momentarily, it doesn't bother me. But if I was looking and reading, if I was reading text on the page with this contrast for a long time, it would begin to irritate my eyes. So I would set it somewhere around there if I were a user and then save this color. That way there's not so much contrast. But some people, some users might like it to be dark like that. Then you reset to default. And it goes back to its original 20% setting and white text. Now I'll explain the JavaScript at work very quickly, and then I'll start tweaking it to show you other things. So the first function we have is named underscore. And I set it up that way. That way in our code down here in these functions, we don't have to keep calling document query selector or document dot get element by ID, whichever way you want to set yours up, we can just reference the underscore in our code. You can see down here, I'm just referencing the underscore instead of writing document dot query selector over and over again within these functions and making my code bulky down there. I can slim down the code and make it a little more easy to read just by using the underscore. So that's what this function is doing. Now for function color reset, all we do is we target the body, the header, the main, and the lightness slider, the range slider, and the body's text color. And we set it back to white, the text color back to white. And we set all of the HSL values, which you could put hex values here for reset of pound 333 if you wanted which would be equivalent to the HSL setting. So that's all the color reset is doing, is setting everything back to the default color of the theme. Now the color adjust function, we're creating a couple of variables here. One is named brightness and one is named HSL. So for the brightness variable, we're targeting the lightness range slider, getting its dot value, which would be a number without the percent sign on it. So we concatenate the percent sign onto it because in our HSL settings, you can see we need a percentage sign on the brightness level. 
That's why we concatenate that there. Then this HSL variable is simply a string that we put together using this dynamic brightness setting that pretty much mimics this. Instead of being static like that, it's dynamic like this. And that gets sunk in right here, here, and here, or anywhere else you want to apply it. Then we target the body, the header, and the main, and we make them all have that brightness setting using HSL. Now in the last tutorial we did two days ago, we manipulated all three of these dynamically. The hue, which let the user change any color they want, so they can have a blue, green, orange, red, whatever kind of color they want, and then adjust. they can adjust the saturation dynamically and the brightness. But in this one, we're gonna focus on just dark and light, white to black and all the gray in between. And we're focusing on changing the color from white to black according to what the lightness setting is. So that's why we have an if condition here and we check the value of the range slider and if it goes above greater than 50, we're gonna change the body's text color to black. Else if the value is 50 or less, we're gonna change the color of the text to white again. All right, so now we've explained 100% of the code that makes the example that you saw operational. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to tweak this code just a little bit, where you can make it to where the header has a slightly darker color or lighter color if you wanted in the dark theme. And then when they switch to light theme, the header can be a darker gray instead of being all white just like the whole page your header can be a slightly different color all right let's do some coding so we'll go into the styles and for the header we'll just copy this background color setting from the body and we'll put it right here in the header instead of 20 percent let's make that 13 percent and i think that will be equivalent to pound 222 in the hex colors. Let's see what that gives us. Let's refresh. All right, good. Now we see our header has a different color or a different darkness and it separates itself better from the whole page. But if you stop there, the problem is when they adjust, everything's gonna be made the same color again to where there's no separation of the color from the header from the rest of the page. It gets lost. So all you have to do is add a little bit of JavaScript to keep that distinction that you want. So we have to target the header and change this HSL value, or more rightly so, this brightness. So we have to target the lightness.value and either add or subtract from that number. So we'll put another variable, we'll call it const header lightness is equal to lightness.value minus five. Or maybe we should name it header brightness. Then we'll have to create another constant for the header HSL. So we'll just call it HHSL. And you know what that stands for now. We'll make that equal to, we'll copy this concatenation. And instead of brightness, we'll put the header brightness variable there. Now that is going to be an HSL setting that is minus five, five less than the brightness of the rest of the page. So we take this and place it here in the background color setting for this headers HSL. And then uh, what else do we need to do? Oh, I have an extra equal sign there. That'll cause a syntax error. Now we'll see if this works. I forgot to concatenate the percent sign onto the header brightness value in the HSL setting. So let's see if that works now. Okay, so here's our application. Let's darken it up a little. And you, yep, you can see that the header, until we get all the way black, you can see there's a distinction between the header darkness or brightness and the body darkness or brightness. 
all the way through, even up to 100% bright. But we have it disappear. That distinction disappears when we get down to zero brightness. And you can account for that in your code with a condition statement. Or you could possibly just constrain it to where it can't get all the way black. So if I put this on 10, the min value can only be 10. It can't go all the way black. Let's see if that fixes anything. Let's go all the way down. Yep. Now we still see a distinction between the header and the rest of the page. So that's one way to fix it and tweak it. And that's probably the best approach to solve that problem. So I'll just leave it like that. And now all the way through, we could see a difference in the color or brightness of the header and the brightness of the rest of the page. But if you didn't want to take that solution or apply that solution, what you could do is go into color adjust and just put another if condition and check if the lightness value is less than five or 10. Then what you can do is brighten up the header just a little bit. Instead of minus five, you can make this header brightness value plus five and then apply the header style dot background color to it. So that's another solution for you. I'm not going to write it out, but I think I explained it well enough to where you could figure that out. And like I was talking about before, there's so many little tweaks that you can put in place here. And actually on the color reset, you want to set the header back to, let's see, where's style? 13%. Header stop barrier right here. The header 13%. And that way when they reset, that distinction will still be there after they play with it a little bit. And then reset. That distinction between the color of the header and the rest of the page will still be in place even when they reset. So all you have to do is add little tweaks to this kind of code and you can get all kind of different functionality and design preferences. So let me explain quickly about the black and white color of the text. What you can do is add more condition statements, whether you want to use if and else, switch, break, case, whatever kind of conditionals that you want to write. Basically, the concept is this. You want to check to see what the value is of the lightness range slider. So you can have the text color change more than just from black to white. You can have the text color change from all different shades of gray according to what shade of gray that the user is preferring to view your application with on the background. You can also change your text to be the most suited for that shade of gray using more condition statements. And in your condition statements, you just evaluate the lightness that value of the slider to whatever number that you want to evaluate against. So basically that's all I wanted to show in this tutorial is how you can allow your users to finely tune the darkness so it's most pleasing to their eye and the contrast is most pleasing to them. And I also wanted to show how you can automatically switch the text color from black to white, black text, white text. And you can change the text color, like I said, all the way through their preference of shades of gray for your application, however bright and however dark they want it. And I also wanted to show slight tweaks you can add to the numbers for the brightness. That way you can have a distinction between your different areas of the page. You might have sidebars over here that have menu items and you want that to be slightly lighter or darker than the rest of the page. That's why I went ahead and showed you how to make the menu be slightly darker or lighter than the rest of the page according to 
a minus 5 or minus 10 or a plus 5 or plus 10. That's how you can get that achieved. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I believe that this is going to be the next generation or the next level of light and dark themes. Because when you go to sites or applications such as even your mobile applications for YouTube and other popular apps, they'll usually give you the choice of light theme or dark theme for your preference and for your user friendliness to be user friendly to you. These very popular apps let you switch from light theme and dark theme according to what you like. And so I think something like this is going to become the next level of that to where the user can fine tune all of the colors like we did in the previous tutorial two days ago where you can make the app red, green, blue, purple, pink, whatever you want. And then also the text will be changing. They, you know, people might even add uh, color pickers. You can easily add color pickers here to this panel for the person to pick the colors they want exactly for the text. You don't have to automatically change the text through the script like we did. So it automatically handles that for them so they don't have much work to do when adjusting the brightness and darkness setting. So the user doesn't have to do much work. They can just go between light and dark and the text changes automatically through script. But you can have color picker in here to let them change the text and also the brightness of the text. They can change the text to pink if they want it or change the text color to blue or green to fine tune it. But I don't think it'll go that far. But what I do believe is that in the future, software and apps will allow a more fine tuning than just switching from light style sheet to dark style sheet like popular apps do today. I think this is going to be the next generation and the next level of theming applications and theme settings. So I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll talk to you in the next one where the next one I might show the save color functionality to where we let this button become active and actually create a cookie that will save the user's uh, color settings and I'll probably use the code from the last tutorial where we were allowing the entire HSL setting where we were doing the hue saturation and the brightness so we can save all three of those values together in one cookie and then when the user arrives back we can get those values from the cookie and apply it to the application before the application loads so they'll have the exact setting, brightness and color and saturation that they chose when they left the app the last time. When they return, all of that color will be displayed automatically. So that's why the save button is there here, right here, button. And we'll just put a an event onto that. And your events, by the way, don't have to be in the HTML. You can set add event listeners in your JavaScript to where none of these events have to be registered here in the HTML. You can just give this button an ID and then create an add event listener code in your JavaScript in the window load event. And that will help reduce your HTML code a little bit and clean it up a little bit. But I just set it right here for the tutorial's sake. I didn't want to make anything too complex for beginners and things like that. And I wanted the code to be slim. So to make my JavaScript slim, slimmer, I just put the register the click event directly in the HTML here. And I'll probably do that for the save color cookie generation function that we create. So it'll be button on click. Probably the function name will be save color. So look forward for that one and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye bye.